travels. I'm stalking. I've been stalking this ground for three years and I'm lucky in having a healthy population of fallow, munchak and a few roe that I'm keeping safe. Uh, there are basically two woods here. One on top and there's a bit of fan in the middle of the clearing. Generally what happens is the deer will cross from one to the other. So we'll go up on this side and set up an eye seat and wait for them to cross. So we'll just work our way down there now, very quietly. We eventually reach the high seat, and it's not long before I'm down. I've spotted a fallow deer in the floodplain behind us. You can just see the fallow have just gone across there, and that's the edge of the permission. So that's the next landowner over there. So we'll just walk out there, we'll see if we can see whether they've gone there any more coming this way. The white doe makes life a lot easier in spotting the herd. Well, the deer that's just on the other side of the boundary have just started to bed down now. So they're obviously not moving anywhere for now. So what we'll do, we'll go back up into the high seat and see what we can see, because there might be some mud jack or there might be some other deer around. And with a bit of luck, they will start to come back this way and we'll catch up them later. Another couple of visits up the high seat and the fallow move off, and so do we. The wood often offers up a mud jack or two and I've recently installed a trail camera which has captured a few on the move. I'm hoping to bump into the original herd of fallow, but instead we come across another, larger herd, which we later discover has been spooked by some ploughing. I'm also pleased to see my row about, which are in their usual spot, although I'm a bit worried I'm missing a doe. As the morning marches on, it would seem that all we've done is spot deer, not shoot them, but then our perseverance pays off and we find the herd with the buck. They know something is up, which is why we're taking it slowly. I get myself up as high as I can on the sticks and wait for an opportunity. I want an animal on its own, away from the rest of the herd. We had the herd there. There were lots of them. They were all grouped together. It's very hard to try and pick one out because they're all standing so close together. We've also got so many eyes watching us. So it's very difficult to see, you know, to try and get up and get into a position where you can shoot safely, but also at the same time, shoot one and shoot the right one and shoot it cleanly. So we've got one down. Uh, the rest of the herd's gone, we've reloaded, it's gone down over there, we should go and follow up on that now. The shot is good, the 308 has done its job. <sighs> Definitely dead. Shot on the shoulder. Came out a little bit far back there, you can see it went in just there. You just drag it to the edge of the field and uh, get some work done. But this is a youngish one. She's, uh, you know, in good condition. Uh, it's a good one to take. There's obviously there's plenty of them there. So, uh, and the, the whole point of being here and managing these deer is to keep their number down or numbers down, because, and you can see we're surrounded by farmland, and too many of them can cause lots of issues for the farmer. They can eat the crops when they're actually lying in the crops. They lie down in them and wreck them. And it's, it's not been a very good year for farming because of the weather. So, uh, you know, it's all the more important to keep these deer numbers down as much as possible. And obviously you have to be, you know, control and make sure the uh, herds are correctly managed to make sure there's a good population of both males and females in there. So uh, today, a good day to take a doe. And you can see everything's looking very healthy. The liver just there. A bit of a fleck on there, but nothing looks too serious at all. I mean, that's a very healthy animal, a very, a very good one to take, and one that would actually go to the game dealer and uh, can go into the food chain, and then people can enjoy the venison that comes from this. So we're, we're serving two purposes, really. Sort of, we're looking after the, the deer herd. Uh, we're looking after the farmer as well, but also we're putting food into the food chain. This is uh, free-range deer, and certainly, certainly not horse. 
Of course, I'm using lead ammunition, which is becoming a more pressing issue, especially in Europe, with a big push towards alternatives. Although there is some evidence from Europe and from America about lead getting into the food chain and actually causing concern for both human health and for wildlife health, it's very important to put things into perspective. The Countryside Alliance, along with FACE, are monitoring this situation both in the UK and in Europe to ensure that there isn't an overall lead ban and to make sure that any evidence which is submitted is thoroughly scrutinised. It might have taken a good few hours and miles and I'm really pleased we saw so many deer. Altogether, it's been a very enjoyable morning. <laughs>